People were just calling them breezers. I, I didn't start with that name. People who got their first breezers just said, oh yeah, here's my breezer and da da da. I was like, cool, okay, I guess that's the name. It's like the old Schwinn head bad shape. And this is Mount Tam in the middle. And uh, railroad grade, my very first mountain bike ride. I kind of like the idea of, of adding a little of the new to the old. This is uh, a sketch of my 1941 uh, Schwinn built BF Goodrich. And it was my first uh, fat tire bike that I ever owned. I uh, chose this geometry from the Schwinn, the Excelsior geometry. I figured, okay, this is a great handling bike. I just wrote down all the measurements, the angles, and all the lengths that were important to design a frame. And then I drew up a frame using that handling geometry and, uh, you know, of course, substituted the curved steel tubes for a straight gauge uh, chromoly airframe tubing. A lot of the same measurements, same chain stay, same head tube, same seat tube, same fork offset. Uh, of course, you can see the, the twin laterals. To hold it to the seat tube, I chose this way of, uh, I made this elliptical tube here. It's just uh, a round tube that's been uh, squashed in a vise. The rear dropouts, you notice it's a track dropout. Six cogs had just come out at that time, uh, so we had, with three in the front, we had 18 gears. Well, these are, these are good strout frames, and that was the idea, to have a frame that, uh, that you could bomb down repack on. The first time out on Breezer number one, I, I won repack on that, on that bike. The top tube actually slopes in what we would call the reverse direction today, and that, uh, that is it's higher in the back and lower in the front. This sold for $750 in 1978, all built. And that, that even came with a, a water bottle and cage and a pump, a nice silica pump and an inner tube and, and a way to hold it underneath the s saddle, the Campanolo uh, track dropouts in the back and a corresponding uh, track dropout Campanolo in the front. Uh, by the way, the first one is the only one that had these fork braces. I made, uh, the, it's a Columbus track blade fork uh, with chromoly um, braces that I made. I even made the little Mickey Mouse here at the top. Uh, and it was way too much work. I even made the crown for it. And by the way, Breezer number one is now in the Smithsonian. It's part of the Smithsonian collection and is on display at the uh, National Museum in Washington, D.C. In uh, 1980, I geared up again uh, for another 25 frames of standard diamond frame. If I remove these twin lateral tubes, I could, I could save three quarters of a pound and 11 fewer welds uh, yet, I would still retain the same uh, torsional rigidity and lateral rigidity because I would substitute uh, the down tube with a bigger diameter tube. That was the way I went in 1980 uh, with the Breezer Series 2 bikes. I finally found some Reynolds blades that were thick enough, 1720 gauge as I recall. I made my own crown, in fact, to go with it. It's a, it's a piece of rectangular uh, steel bar stock that I pierced that size hole in right there uh, to make it a hollow crown. This time, I used Campanola horizontal dropouts. I, I guess I had a little shorter chain stays on these later bikes. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, what, a 1982 uh, Series 3 Breezer. And the numbers started not at zero, but at 25, I believe. It's possible, I, it, or maybe I cut tubes for 50. I, I can't even remember now. But, uh, but anyway, I, I still have a lot of that tubing. The fork, okay, this is, um, a Cunningham arch crown. Okay, two pieces of tubular steel uh, formed to accept a Reynolds blade. The ring clamp on here is, is I, I flowed the brass into it to just match the aesthetic of, of the head tube. But other than that, it's, it's pretty much uh, like a, a series two. Uh, a friend of mine uh, who had been I'd known for, for a number of years in bicycling, Terry Bunton, came over one day and he wanted to get a breezer. And he said he was going over to Switzerland he came back with a roll of uh, 10 centime pieces from a bank in Switzerland, which happened to fit right inside uh, a machined lip on the uh, steering step. And so I would just sweat those in there with silver. So each one would come with a, with a special uh, 10 centime piece from Confederatio Helvetica. Early 80s or so, I started working with a friend of mine, Josh Angel, who had a bunch of ideas. I spun a lot of wheels on ideas that actually didn't go anywhere, but one item that did go somewhere was a height right. This uh, seat locating spring right here, so um, you could uh, adjust your saddle on the, the fly. I understand they're quite popular today. But this is, this is the granddaddy, it's called a height right. 
be one breezer on the deck, and this will be the breezer there at the uh, Marin Museum of Bicycle, the new home of the Hall of Fame, uh, which is actually opening in just a few hours. <laughs> this better be in place, and I better have a little bit of sleep in me, because we're going to have a wild party down there. When a space downtown Fairfax here came up for rent, uh, it was just in the perfect place, the old Good Earth store right downtown Fairfax, and uh, we jumped on that. Come on by and check it out.